Does Apple's iPad OS pose a threat to the Surface Pro? What about Electron apps? Will they play a big role on Windows Core OS? All that and more on this episode of Ask Dan. Stay tuned. Have you yet tried to leak the Edgium ARM64 build? All right, to add some context to this, so Microsoft is working on a brand new browser. It's still Edge, but it's based on Chromium. We lovingly call it Edgium, and that's what's referred to here. Now, there is an ARM64 version coming out. That is, it's being compiled to work on ARM devices, including the Lenovo Yoga C630 and other ones that are out there. And I have actually seen this at Taipei. So Qualcomm was there. We got to cover the 8CX and some more information with that processor that's coming out. And they did actually have an officially compiled version of this browser for ARM, so I did get to try it there. There's also one floating around now that is leaked out. It's basically, you have to recompile it and run a command. It's a little tricky. I don't actually recommend you go just download random browsers off the internet, especially ones that have been compiled. You don't necessarily know where they're coming from. That said, I have tried it. It does run quite well. It does run native as expected and performance is very good, but we are still in early days. The bigger question is when should we expect this as an official beta or even canary? Well, I hear in the next few months, it should be coming out definitely by years end. They want this out for ARM devices. Now, there are some other rumors coming out that Microsoft themselves are working on a Surface ARM device, in which case this may pair up nicely with that timing. We'll have to wait and see though, but overall, yeah, it's a pretty nice browser and I'm very excited about it. Is iPad OS a threat to Surface Pros or other two-in-ones? All right, so Apple had a bunch of announcements recently, including those around iOS 13 and iPad OS, which is coming out soon. You can go and download the beta though. It's only for developers at this point, so I don't really recommend it. So the question here is, does iPad OS present a threat to Surface? And it may sound a little weird, because some of you will point out quickly that the Surface Pro running a full version of Windows 10 will always be more powerful than iOS or an iPad OS or even the iPad. And while I can agree with that for some of you, I think for average consumers who are looking at both of these devices, I think the choice becomes much more difficult with iPad OS. The reason is, and I've been saying this for a while, soon as iOS or iPad OS, whatever they want to call it, gets mouse and trackpad support, well, it becomes more like a computer. That's something that's been missing so far. Sure, the iPad always was a flat device and couldn't have a kickstand, but now they have that weird keyboard thing and it can kind of stand up. It is definitely getting closer to the Surface Pro in terms of design and functionality, something that's not lost on me for irony since Apple made fun of Microsoft a few years ago for that. For a lot of people, including myself, I never gravitated towards an iPad, although I own a few of them, because I just don't like using it. You always have to reach up and touch the screen Screen or use the keyboard, but you can't use a trackpad. It's really, really discerning for those of us who are used to that type of input. Now that Apple is finally starting to add some of it, yeah, I think it's actually a really big deal. Now that said, Microsoft still has Windows Core OS and Windows Lite coming out. And we'll start to see them compete on that end, but I do view this as a threat, not for you pro users out there, but for you regular people who are looking between the Surface and still look at those iPad Pros and are getting really jealous of that hardware. Yeah, I see it as a big threat. What will Windows Lite entail for us low-end PC peasants? All right, you low-end PC peasants are actually the majority of users out there, which is why I spend a lot of time talking about light computing and future computing devices, is I really see this as the future for a lot of people, a lot of average folks, and those who just want something lighter on the go. So what does Windows Lite bring to the table? Now, obviously Microsoft has not even announced this, although they started talking a little bit about it at Computex 2019, and we'll have to wait for them to actually announce it, show off what it can do, but what we're expecting, Think of something like Chrome OS, a little bit of the iPad OS combined though with Windows. So this thing is built up on UWP, the universal Windows platform, and it's very modern, has fluent design, it's very clean. It doesn't have the standard start menu that we're familiar with. Instead, it pops up and it looks more sort of like your iPhone or Android device with a simple menu with a bunch of icons on there. It is gonna be a simple light OS, but it'll still be powerful in the sense it runs UWP apps, but it can also run Win32 apps, what we understand to be either containerized or virtualized. In some way, it's gonna actually support those apps though. So for those of you who wanna run your old school apps, you should still be able to do that. So what you should expect, very good performance, very good battery life, very good security, installing apps and games 
through the store, but you also can fall back to the older system. Still, this should be that competitor to Chrome OS and iPad that we've been expecting, but until Microsoft actually shows us what it is and what it can do, a lot of this will remain a mystery. We'll have to wait and see though. Do you think we'll see ARM64 and always connected PCs catch on eventually? I already feel like I have to address this every few months. It's kind of an interesting question. It's not just about getting people to buy ARM64 devices, but about the ecosystem that grows up around it. There are obviously some limitations around ARM64, including running certain programs. Now, recently at Computex 2019 in Taipei, Qualcomm was there to show off the 8CX as well as the new 3D mark benchmarking program, which will compare Intel and Qualcomm chips directly, which is really interesting. We saw the ATX hold up pretty well against the Core i5, in fact, beating it often, including in battery life, which is expected. But part of that ecosystem is gonna be things like Electron, getting it to go over to ARM64, which has been announced. There's also Unity, which is of course used for video games and drives the graphics there. That too is now being ported over to ARM. And these are the real important bits and bolts that on the surface, aren't very exciting, but are the things that create and make the system much better going on. As that system comes online, as the 8CX comes available later this year, well, I think ARM will be a lot more attractive. So as you start to blur and break down those barriers between ARM and Intel in terms of user experience, I think the selling point for ARM becomes very powerful. Don't forget you do get 4G built into that chip, which is something that's still extra on Intel. You have to pay around $100, $150 extra for those modems. So this is going to be an an interesting advantage for Qualcomm is of course battery life. That said, Intel is no slouch. With the new 10 nanometer ice-like chips coming out online, those are actually pretty good so far and they look really impressive. So I think it's gonna be an interesting race between Intel and ARM. For you, the consumer though, all you have to do is sit back and watch and see which one is better or meets your needs. I just like seeing the competition between the two because in the end, I think we all went out. Will Microsoft Core OS mainly use Electron JavaScript apps packaged to UWP? All right, the Universal Windows Platform, or UWP, always a controversial topic. Some of you are gonna call it dead. I wrote an editorial, though, recently talking about how it's actually not dead. In fact, it's just one of many tools that Microsoft is making available to developers to build apps for Windows 10. Microsoft's only concerned with one thing right now, getting devs to make apps on Windows 10 by any means necessary. Whether you want to use UWP, whether you want to use Electron, whether you want to use PWA or Win32 centralized apps, it's up to you. In fact, what was announced at Build 2019 was the ability for developers to take parts of UWP and modernize their existing legacy apps. In other words, you could take Win32, modernize the UI using XAML Islands, which is part of UWP, and bring your app online and make it a little bit more modern than the previous version. Don't forget, it's not just about looks, it's about performance as XAML Islands actually performs quite well compared to old school Win32 stuff. Now, I've seen some internal information showing that Microsoft plans to use PWA and Electron for a lot of their apps, as well as using UWP where it makes sense and expect developers to follow suit. How does that make sense? Well, it does because Microsoft is not only concerned with building apps and services just for Windows 10. If they were, they would just use UWP. Instead, they're looking to build out their stuff cross-platform for iOS and Android. Well, UWP there at this time doesn't make a lot of sense. Going down the road though, they are bringing parts of UWP over to those systems, which is part of the new Fluent Design System, which now extends to iOS, Android, and the web itself. So where Microsoft actually wants to make apps that live on other services, they will use things like Electron and PWA. And this is actually good news because a lot of people point out, and I think they're correct, that Electron actually has some performance issues and uses a lot of RAM. It's not the most elegant system out there, yet it works quite well. If you look at things like Slack, Discord, and Spotify, those are Electron apps and they perform okay, but they could be better. Why is this good that Microsoft's using it? Because it's dog fooding. They get to see the performance issues with it, as well as the problems deving for Electron or PWA for progressive web apps, and then they can go and fix those. If they just use UWP and tell everybody else to use Electron and JavaScript, but they themselves don't use it, well, they may not be able to optimize it. For instance, one of the issues with PWAs is gonna be the web view, what powers it. Right now it's Edge HTML for Windows 10, and that's okay, that's the default thing, and it performs all right, but we're using using now Chromium as the browser, why not bring over the Chromium JavaScript engine for PWAs? Microsoft is in fact doing that. It's gonna be up to developers. Later this fall, they're gonna be able to package the Chromium JavaScript along with WebView 
for PWAs, giving that performance improvement. What Microsoft isn't doing though is cutting devs off from anything. They're giving them just more options. If they choose to use that for their PWAs, well, they can. All right, so that does it for this episode. Now, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or shoot me an email at AskDan at WindowsCentral.com. You can even leave me a comment below and maybe I'll answer them there as well. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.